Hey guys, uh, today we're going to talk, uh, talk about the human nervous system and uh, today's lesson is on action potential and transmission of impulse. Uh, it's a very important lesson and uh, uh, it's presented by me, Kaushik Chari. I'm presently pursuing my MBBS from AIMS and you can follow me on Academy using this link. So, moving on, action potential. Uh, based on my previous lesson, you, uh, there's a resting membrane potential that is generated at rest between uh, the inner and outer side of the membrane, uh, due to which the membrane is called polarized. polarized. And uh, the action potential is b basically a response that is recorded uh, when you give a single stimulus to the membrane and then you see how it behaves. So classically consists of a phase of depolarization and followed by repolarization so on depolarization generally normally at rest the membrane is negatively charged on the inside and positively charged on the outside but on depolarization this just becomes the opposite that the membrane becomes positive on the inside and negative on the outside and this this depolarization is transient and then we have a process of repolarization which shifts the uh, this disturbance back to normal by putting the membrane on negative on the inside and positive on the outside. So these are the two things that you should know, the depolarization and repolarization. And these changes are represented graphically and which which uh, is the action potential. So uh, before I go on to the next slide, I should uh, tell you that you must know the following things to understand the genes genesis of the action potential. The channel, the sodium channel, the potassium channel, and the three phases of the sodium channel so it was all explained in my previous lesson you might go through that before going on to this so this is a graphical picture of the action potential so it looks complex and uh, taunting in the beginning but don't worry about it I'll explain it through and so this is an action potential as you can see this is the resting membrane potential you should know the resting membrane potential is usually negative so it is below zero so zero is somewhere here and then this is 90 minus 90 sorry so as when you apply a stimulus here represented by these arrows the potential first goes up so at rest the sodium channel is closed the activation gate is closed and the inactivation gate is open uh, please refer to my previous lesson so as as you go above the threshold sodium channel gets into a state of activation so you have the act when the activation gate opens and the inactivation gate is anyway open so sodium starts comes coming in to the membrane so you can imagine that the membrane is negatively charged on the inside positively on the outside and when uh, ion like sodium starts uh, moving in why does sodium move in uh, for obvious reasons because the concentration of sodium is more in the extracellular fluid and it is less in the intracellular fluid so it moves along its concentration gradient when the sodium channels open in the membrane so usually the membrane is not permeable to sodium but when the channels open it becomes permeable and sodium starts moving inside so as the sodium starts moving inside a positive charge develops within uh, the inside of that membrane so the membrane potential starts becoming positive so beyond one point the sodium channel gets inactivated so the thing you should remember here is that potassium channels are kind of lazy so at the point from the point of stimulus the potassium channels usually open late whereas the sodium channel open early so sodium first moves in and when it reaches a peak sodium gets inactivated so sodium is inactivated the inactivation gets closed so, so sodium is not uh, moving in anymore well whereas the potassium channels open so now the potassium starts moving out from inside to outside along its concentration gradient because its permeability has suddenly increased so and the membrane potential starts to become negative again because the positive ion is moving outside from inside of the cell so the membrane potential starts to get negative again so you should remember so that from this phase to this phase the sodium channel is actually not resting it is an, an inactivated state and it goes into a resting state at this point so at this point the sodium channel goes into a resting state so it is very important to remember this because the next thing I'm going to come into is the absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period so from here and the membrane potential starts to drop again and it comes down to normal actually there is a particular phase when the membrane potential goes below normal and again it restores back so this phase is known as the hyperpolarization which I have explained over here which I have mentioned over here so what is the absolute refractory period so imagine that someone gives a stim stimulus to the same uh, segment the same membrane over here over here 
when the sodium channel is inactivated so irrespective of how strong a stimulus you give over here you cannot evoke another action potential because the action potential all starts with opening of the sodium channel when the sodium channel is inactivated it cannot open but here as the sodium channel becomes resting if someone gives a stimulus over here the sodium channel will open because it is resting but the membrane potential has still not reached so that's why we call it the relative refractory period so the absolute refractory period is that period when you give any amount of stimulus you cannot evoke an action potential because the sodium channel is in an inactivated state it is not in an activated state when it gets to a resting state that when that's when you can get it to activation state you cannot make it activated from inactivated it has to first pass through the resting state and the sodium channel only reaches the resting state over here so this period is known as the absolute refractory period where you cannot give cannot make the membrane uh, evoke another action potentially respective of what stimulus you give so some terms absolute refractory period is the time when no stimulus can evoke another action potential the reason i explained it before because the sodium channels are in a state of inactivation over here so that's why you can never evoke an action potential this is important mcq or assertion reason type question and the relative refractory period as i mentioned is a stimulus can evoke a response but rmp is not reached so the role of na plus k plus atp is it maintains the rmp by flushing out sodium that comes in due to leakage so there is some mem i've explained it in my previous uh, lesson as well that there are the membrane is not perfect so some amount of sodium might leak in from outside to inside through non specific channels so the na plus k plus atp is flushes that out and it flushes out the sodium that comes in after depolarization so after depolarization the, during the phase of repolarization uh, uh, this excess sodium that is in the inside of the cell that has come due to depolarization is pushed out by the na plus k plus atp so these are two important roles of the na plus k plus atp that you must remember so how is the impulse transmitted so let's deal with it in two steps one is transmission within the neuron and the other is transmission from one neuron to the other at the synapse so transmission within the neuron so this is a neuron and you have applied a stimulus here so this gets depolarized as i said that depolarization means that the charge on the inside becomes positive and outside becomes negative now this inside charge also has a tendency to move forward so it moves forward this charge spreads and then it, this charge actually acts as a stimulus to the next part of the membrane this charge the positive charge acts as stimulus to the next part of the membrane and then this membrane is depolarized and then this membrane is depolarized and you have a, then this membrane will get a positive charge on the inside and the negative charge on the outside so now you may ask me so when this part is depolarized why doesn't the impulse move back why doesn't the impulse move back you can answer this if you have understood the concept of the refractory periods because this membrane will be in the refractory state that so that the stimulus that this membrane will give to this will not act on this so initially you apply a stimulus here that gets depolarized which acts as stimulus for the next part of the membrane which acts as stimulus for the next part for the next part and this keeps just keeps jumping from here to here to here so this is how uh, impulse transmits in the neuron but it doesn't move back because the immediate previous segment will be in a state of refraction okay so the function of the myelin sheet in the nodes of ranvier have from the first lesson if you remember the, this myelin acts as an insulation and the impulse jumps from here to here so this part goes and depolarizes this part this acts as a ins insulator and this cannot be depolarized so the impulse from here jumps here this is known as saltatory conduction so it jumps from one node of ranvier to the other node of ranvier and throughout the length of the neuron this increases the speed of transmission so this is known as saltatory conduction so at the synapse the story is a little different how is it different i will show you over here so if you look at the synapse the impulse comes in but at the synapse you have certain calcium channels which open up on depolarization this calcium moves into the cell at the presynaptic terminal and it fuses with and it makes these vesicles fuse and these vesicles contain the neurotransmitter which is released and it acts it, it acts on the next uh, segment that is the dendrite which depolarizes this so in at the synapse there is a role of these calcium channels which open up on depolarization that is what i have mentioned here that impulse in coming from the neuron depolarized membrane and opens up calcium channels at the terminal 
the inf influx of calcium leads to fusion of the vesicles. So that's it for this chapter and thank you for